Hello, everyone. My name is Tess Van Gorder. I work for Michigan Farm Bureau as a uh, conservation and regulatory relations specialist. And uh, my colleague, Tom Pipko, and I are going to talk to you about the Michigan Manure Hauler Certification Program and reducing risk around manure. So a little bit about what I do. I work with our farmer members on um, a lot of different environmental topics from voluntary conservation to helping them work through um, if they run into any sort of regulatory um, snarls. And then I'll let Tom introduce himself. Yes, thanks, Tess. Um, I work with the Farm Bureau insurance side and with Michigan Farm Bureau and mainly with the risk management services and really couples with agribusiness um, on the farms. So that's where I uh, work in, and Tess and I work hand in hand with a lot of exposures in, in the state of Michigan. So first we'll go through um, what the Michigan Manure Hauler Certification Program is, and then we'll run it into, um, Jay set us up very well, talk about how do we reduce risk and how do we reduce that probability of something happening when you're either hauling or applying manure. So the Manure Hauler Certification Program is a voluntary certification program, and really for anyone who hauls and or applies manure, we've worked with folks who just haul manure, who just apply, or do both. Um, so really a variety of farms and firms that um, work with manure. And this is a great partnership between Michigan State University Extension and Michigan Farm Bureau Family of Companies, um, and we have a leadership team that reflects that. I know Charles Gould is watching us today um, as a great partner for Michigan State on helping uh, make this program a possibility. Um, so for our goals, again, preventing manure application problems or problems while manure hauling, um, and then increasing nutrient management plan implementation, um, demonstrating responsible manure application, increasing that base level of manure management knowledge, and improving professionalism. Again, the best way to do this is to reduce that risk around um, either uh, knowledge or uh, your equipment to help make sure that the manure is being used as a valuable nutrient and staying there for the plants to be uh, to use it. And so how does our program work? So we have three levels and everyone starts at level one and can do as many or as few levels as they would like based on their um, farms or firms goals. And then each level has two components and one is always an on-site equipment review. Um, and that'll be what our presentation focuses on later on, looking at what we've seen and how we work with folks on those um, on-site equipment review. So looking at everything from pumps to tankers, um, really a whole variety of manure equipment. Um, I just recently did the math and I think we've, I, well, I know we've looked at over a hundred pieces of equipment in the uh, tenure of the program so far. So we still have lots of folks in the hopper to go through that. So for level one, um, we do for the first part is everyone goes through an online course that looks at the broad overview of just best practices and hauling of hauling and applying manure. And we do have some, uh, you know, discussing some of our state specific um, opportunities and uh, regulations and recommendations. And then, then you have that equipment review. That's our basic inspection points. And that's just to reduce that risk of something happening when you're hauling or applying. So really just trying to look at um, certain things that would cause a spill on the road that might, um, impact your visibility on the road, or that could cause a major issue in the field. Oops. Um, for level two, um, we offer the opportunity for continuing education uh, credits, which a lot of times, thanks to Leslie and her crew, use the LPELC webinars for, or you can become verified in the livestock system of the Michigan Agriculture Environmental Assurance Program. That is our state's uh, premier environmental assurance program that looks a lot of how to reduce that environmental risk on farms. So we felt that it was a good fit to kind of marry those two voluntary programs for our program and help make things easier for farmers looking to participate in this program. And again, with that on-site equipment review, it has that level one inspection points and then those uh, additional points of review with an additional focus on um, spill response. 
And then level three is the highest level. Um, this is where folks complete an environmental management system plan or EMS plan. And really this is to lay out their standard operating procedures, training equipment, um, how do they up keep their equipment, keep folks on the loop of how you know, spill response procedures, what are their environmental goals for their operation, and really wanting them to review that yearly to make sure folks are really um, absorbing that. It's not just a piece of paper or report that sits on the shelf, it's how do we keep this in front, help them keep this from them and their staff. And then obviously, um, again, that equipment review, and that'll be the highest level review um, there is. So some of our monetary incentives. So um, Farm Bureau Insurance provides, um, uh, you can read those discounts out, 5% or 10%, depending on the level. And this is really as they've seen that, um, that redu reduction correlates to that reduction in risk. If they're going through this program, if they're getting that on-site equipment review, they're seeing that reduction in risk of something happening um, either on the road or in the field, and then leads to that um, discount that they're willing to offer. And we're also working on creating a space where folks can come look and see who is verified or certified, excuse me, to see, okay, if I know that um, Tom's farm is certified, um, am I more likely to hire Tom to do my um, custom hauling and application? So really um, trying to develop that part as well to kind of have that hopefully will translate into a monetary motivation, but really create that culture around the program of being able to say, folks who do this, um, do this program are ones you should hire because they have done the extra mile to do go through one to three levels and gone through that on-site equipment review and things like that. So when we go into the managing risk portion, we'll talk about briefly about manure gases, equipment, um, safety and visibility, and then generally hammering home the point of uh, that a couple of our other speakers have talked about preventative measures. In this case, we talk a lot about um, preventative maintenance. So um, I know the LPLC, LPELC has done webinars on this before, but keep in mind manure gases, especially um, hydrogen sulfide, this can kill you. So um, as you're working with farmers, this is something definitely to um, keep hammering home so that we can make sure that everyone gets to home, go home at the end of the day. Um, then we'll lead into, you know, equipment. This is kind of the core of our equipment review and how we're really um, narrowing in and, you know, looking at that risk. So these are all pictures that you can see on the slide that we have uh, taken uh, on various outings. So when folks for the SMV is technically there, but not uncovered, there's some things that, um, you know, the dent in the wheel rim and some issues with the welds. And some of these might be uh, you know, conversations that say, hey, we noticed that, keep an eye on that, and if it gets worse, or some things might be, you know, hey, please fix this before, you know, we issue the certification. And this equipment review is not me is meant to complement regulations. We're not there to ensure compliance. It's a voluntary program, and what we're, that's what we're looking to do is be a voluntary program focused around the risk around, um, specifically around manure hauling and application. And we may point things out that are saying, you know, you may want to consider this because of X, Y, and Z. Um, and again, really trying to be a collaborative process to be able to say, you know, we put what we're looking out for on the program web website and we really try and have that collaborative process and it seems to be going well so far. Um, so I'll hand it over to Tom to talk about transportation and some of the risks we've seen um, and how we evaluate, look at those as we're going through these equipment reviews. Excellent. Thanks, Tess. Um, thanks for teeing that up. As we look at the implements of husbandry versus um, commercial vehicles, um, so many times when we're out on farms doing site visits, there's a lot of questions that um, that come to this and people are, are really unsure. They don't know whether if it's an implement of husbandry or commercial vehicles. So um, we think it's imperative that you know the difference um, and know the rules within your personal state. And, um, you know, when you're out on the roads, whether you're hauling manure or hauling livestock or hauling um, forage for your animals, you know, it's imperative that you know the rules so you're in compliance as you move forward. Okay, the next slide, Tess. One thing we have in Michigan is um, it's a Michigan Farmers Transportation Guidebook. 
And what we've done is we of uh, Michigan Farm Bureau has worked in conjunction with Michigan State Police and the Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division to come up with a uh, um, farmers or a farmers transportation guidebook. Now this could be different for different states, but what we do is we have this free and available for all insured farmers in the state of Michigan um, that is with Michigan Farm Bureau. And, you know, it's like I said, when I go out on farms and I've been on a lot of farms in this past six months, not many of these farmers knew about these. What we do is I was an acting president in our county and we would have a yearly um, farmers transportation guidebook meeting when we'd have our local farmers come and hand these out and go over the regulations. And we would do this in conjunction with um, state police DOT officers as well. So they would get up and talk. And a lot of times these DOT officers would say when they pull a farmer over, they carry one of these guidebooks right in their police car and go through that with the farmer when they're going over through some of the stuff that they're finding as um, deficiencies on their vehicles. You know, as we talk about equipment inspections, every minor thing causes catastrophic events and infield repairs. So many times, you know, I, I think when we go out on a farm and everybody wants to know that magic answer of what can we do to prevent risk or um, how can we be proactive instead of reactive. And I and, you know, at the end of the day, there's really no magical answer for anybody that's on the farm is except doing preventative maintenance and stop tripping over the little things that are right in front of us. Because as a farmer, and I've been a third generation dairy farmer, is we are so busy and we have so much up tempo on our farm that you just walk past it every day. The small things that always seem to be that niche that catch us at the end of the day. Um, you know, DOT inspections required for commercial vehicles. You know, that's going to be normal for that with DOT on commercial. And that's the importance of knowing and using the farmer's transportation guidebook to know the implements of husbandry and, you know, what it's going to be for not non-agriculture. You know, the lowest bar is that it must be safely operable. We always want everything to be operable and everything ties safely with safety and spill prevention. As the next slide, which shows an abbreviated vehicle inspection procedure. This is what DOT specifically uses when they pull somebody over. And I think this is imperative that farmers, you know, they do this quick inspection before they even start the process of getting on their vehicle in the morning in their in their um, tractor or hauling manure, or like I said, forage. You know, do a quick walk around, know the steps. And it's impor important that you train this down to the lowest level. Yeah, we as managers of our farms, we always feel confident and we know our vehicle, but when you run this down to the lowest level, and I always say where the rubber meets the road and how, how ironic is that's really what ties into this is your lowest level operator needs to know these abbreviated vehicle inspection procedures. So you run that down to the lowest level to ensure that they know that piece of equipment is safe as well. You know, we look, we've seen a little bit of tires and rims. You know, when you do a walk around, it's not too hard to see a rim being bent or it's not too not too hard to see acceptable rubber that you have. You know, you guys, you can go down to the sh the slideshow here. You can see what's acceptable, acceptable. But then you get into the cracks and the rejects and that's where it really gets sketchy. And the problem is with you can identify this before you get on the road. It could really mitigate a huge factor when you're transporting thousands of gallons of manure and you have a blowout on your tire and it dumps into um, the ditch or say you got a school bus coming your way. And I've been behind people transport manure all the time and I see school buses going back and forth past the transportation of manure on, on main roads. So it's imperative that we look at that. You look at the next slide, you look at your tires. Obviously you can see the wear on the inside of this one, this one large tire on this. Um, transportation wagon for some manure. So when you see that and you do your walk around, you should know there's an issue there. And that's something that we really have to look at. And like I said, you got to push this down to the lowest level of your employees. This is a critical one as well as you have your guards and shields and safety equipment. You know, you look at this, you look at this one and I can pinpoint several things with deficiencies right here. And, you know, one of the big ones is your guards for your PTO shafts. Um, I don't know, those things are very unforgiving. And when you have employees out walking around them or climbing over them, 
that is a, that is a huge no, no for any operation. You know, as, as we look down, you can see the safety chains and draw pins. You see that we're lack thereof. Our draw pin is bad. We don't have a PTO guard. We don't have chains going up and hooking up. And then another thing we show is our, um, our lines that we have hooked up. And it's important that when you have those line, those and they're hanging, you want to zip tie them or have them so they're not getting caught in pinch points. And you can see a, a nice one on the left how they have it zip tied. And then you go to the right and they're not zip tied. And another thing is you can look at the cracks and frays on those lines and for their hydraulic lines. And I think it's imperative that, you know, you do that walkthrough and you will check that if you're doing your walkthrough thoroughly every day. It's not going to show in one day and then the next day it could be bad. It's over amount of time. But just doing that walkthrough and having that familiarization with your equipment is imperative. Next is our visibility and reflectors and lights. So many times I, I go down a road and I travel all over the state of Michigan and I will see vehicles with no SMV sign, no tractors or wagons with no SMV signs on the back. And honestly, you can get an SMV sign for $5. And the money that $5 sign could save you, if say you're operating that piece of equipment and a school bus or anybody runs into the back of your piece of equipment, or a disc, or you're hauling your manure, if you don't have an SMB sign on there and someone runs into you, it is still your fault. And another big thing is, as you can see on, on this, a, a clean SMB sign, one that's shredded or torn to replace. Another thing is when you come off the fields and you're spreading manure, you got to understand when you're spreading that manure, you're going to have a lot of material of that media on your SMB signs. So you need to ensure that you get off and do a quick walk around before you get back on that road to ensure that your reflectors, if you go back to the left slide, you have your reflectors will be on the back and your lights for another instance in the rear or the front and your SMB signs are visible before you get back on the road. It might take you two minutes to do a quick walk around and clean your lights or your SMB signs off, but that preventative maintenance can save lives and an intense amount of money in the future moving forward. Okay, this is another good one we look at here is your spill box and flow monitoring. I know as a farmer, and we've all been there, when you're, when you're filling your, um, your liquids up or your solids and your spreaders, you're filling it up to your max capacity so you can get more for your load. I get it. I've been there. I've done it. But when you have your spill box and your flow monitor operating properly, it will mitigate that if you're on the roads and having anything falling off or getting onto the roads. Because once you do that, and that's submitted to the state, then you're opening up a can of worms that can be expensive and could cause serious hazards for the environment and for people that are driving on the roads. If we look on structures, you know, when you do your walk around, you can see welds breaking. One thing I know here in Michigan is we have the four seasons and we do have a lot of potholes in our state. And especially our county alone, I still say is one of the worst in the state of Michigan for uh, our roads. And when you will have wear on your equipment and the more you notice that and you do your walk arounds, you will mitigate that risk. What we have here is nice is you're seeing some signs of preventative maintenance where they've worked on a weld. Yeah, it's cracked. You can see they've tried doing a weld there that will fix that. If we go on to the next one where your tires, you know, okay, you got a 1.5 on there. That shows that People, I like seeing this because that shows that preventative maintenance is getting done and they're marking their tires and labeling them properly. We go on to the next with the inspections, feeds, maintenance, and specific needs. Very important. These four critical, these four steps here are, you know, they're the lifeline to preventing and being um, proactive instead of reactive. Inspections confirm maintenance practices are effect effective. Formal maintenance schedules allow for inventory of critical parts. Like we spoke of earlier, with Jay, yeah, we do. It's nice to have your parts on standby, but if you're doing the proper preventative maintenance, you're mitigating that risk before it even gets out on the road or no, anybody starts that piece of equipment. And then a formal maintenance record, records contribute to your defense. These are all three, four critical things that really can help and set people up for success moving it forward. Mm -hmm.